Hello all, uh, Knife Edge UK here, uh, going to bring you um, another kind of really special um, knife today. Um, this is a piece by Brandon Corbin of Corbin Steelworks um, and it's gorgeous. This is the Grace. This was the first Grace. This is the Grace prototype. There's now a V2. Um, the Grace changed slightly after this. He's one of those, um, you know, those small, very high-end um, American makers that, you know, everything seems to iterate slightly all the time in a really good way, a little bit like Ian at CMF. And yeah, this is um, this is going to be this is going to be a little bit of a cringe fest as I go over how much I love this knife because this is one of my favorite pieces in my whole collection now. So without much further ado, let's just quickly do a few size comparisons. There it is next to a Sebenza 21, a Hindra MP1. As you can see, it's smaller all round, um, but it has a real feeling of solidity about it. Uh, next to a um, a Shamwari three inch, as you can see, you know, blade length, um, it's a little bit bigger, but overall presence is, is much more considerable. And then because it's an unusual knife, I'll stick it next to a ruler just for the fun of it. So who's Brandon Corbin? Well, Brandon Corbin has been making a real name for himself um, in the uh, US custom knife scene and with good reason. And this just speaks to me as a design, as does the V2 version of this. And the, the Grace is it's just a beautiful knife. So let's let's go over this one. I, I could say a lot about Brandon's work. It, everything he does is he's a complete, you know, he's a hand maker. Um, you know, this is not a CNC maker. And everything he does has its own kind of unique quirk. Some of the pivots he's doing now are just gorgeous. They're like kind of inlaid but you can't see where the inlaid, they're, they're beautifully done. He does these really interesting handle finishes, which we'll get to, um, and his grime work is beautiful as well. He seems to have really, really gained in popularity over the last year or so, maybe a bit longer than that, um, and the quality of his work, uh, I can only vouch for this knife, obviously. Um, some people will, uh, some people might have older ones that they don't like as much or whatever, I, I couldn't say. I'm going off this knife alone. But this knife is is world class. So let's just go over it. So up front, we've got a really beautiful blade. This is a blade of Michael Norris um, Fire Clone um, Stainless Damascus with a CTS XHP Sanmai style core. Uh, and it's it's gorgeous. I'm not always the biggest um, Damascus fan in the world. Um, I tend to like Damascus when it's not too deeply etched. I tend to like it when it's not too highly polished. And this is both of those things. The etch is purely visual. You can only just feel the etch as you move your hand along the knife. And then it's been given this hand rub satin finish beforehand. So it's basically a hand rub satin with an etch over the Damascus. And it's worked gorgeously the hand rub satin is really good it's really really clean and even as you can see the core is running very very centrally in this it's just excellent the thumb studs oh actually let's talk about the blade shape for a second obviously we've got a recurve here um i seem to have i seem to have all of a sudden got a couple of customs with recurves i don't mind recurves at all i find them very pretty would they be my main choice on a knife that i was going to use day in day out no um do I care on a custom if I'm more looking at it as a piece of art? Absolutely not. Um, it got a nice hollow grind running into a very, very fine edge. And then the leading edge is quite convex, really nicely done, beautiful swedge on the top. The grind is super even from side to side. It's excellent work. I mean, it's just a gorgeous blade. I mean, come on, look at that. Proportionally, in terms of the materials used, it's just gorgeous. It's, uh, you know, very elaborate without being too, too flashy as a knife as a whole. Uh, from there, we have zirconium thumb studs um, and a zirconium pivot. The thumb studs are this really cool kind of uh, hourglass kind of shape to them. They're very nice. The handle is solid titanium, uh, all hand contoured with a really interesting blast finish. I believe there are two different types of media used from um, what Brandon said. And you also have the little detail here. Sorry, there's a bit of shadow going on, but he's blasted the ends of the screws to match with the actual handle. 
little bit of sort of next level care and attention going in. Uh, it's a really interesting feel. It's almost soft touch. It's beautiful. I would now like this handle um, finish on loads of different knives. I love it. In pictures, I really wasn't sure if I was going to like it, if I was going to find... This has actually been, like, you know, rubbed against a couple of little things that, you know, a Sebenza, for example, would get a snail trail. This hasn't got one. It's it's clean as a whistle, absolutely not a mark on it. And it feels fantastic, looks really pretty. It's got traction. It's great. If you're going to, you know, if you're lucky enough to get a Corbin, you know, that's in a simpler format as a user, uh, this kind of finish would be really really lovely because it feels fantastic and it's very utilitarian um backspacer these are by twist tie i think it's called it's actually um quite poignantly at the at the time i'm recording this a ukrainian um business i believe uh, but it's you know it's zirka tie style multiple different types of damascus uh, sorry multiple different types of titanium um mixed in a damascus style with uh, zirconium this has been done in a lovely satin finish i prefer that to highly polished versions of this kind of material it's just a lovely little touch of class it's not too glitzy or overly flashy it just works really nicely and if you look at the knife as a whole I mean, that just flows so well. It's also a really functional pocket clip. It's got a nice amount of spring. It's not too shallow in terms of its carry. It's it's a really good clip. It works really well, internally screwed, so you've got no hardware on the outside. Uh, lovely uh, backspacer done in the same way. As you can hopefully see, it's a rounded kind of crowned backspacer that you get this lovely kind of three hump thing going on on the back, and then it's completely flat, um, sort of in a hafted style around the butt of the knife it's it's expertly done really nice complex zirconium pivot on the back uh, tool for torques um, and then very simple frame lock really nice kind of three-piece milled lock bar relief yeah it's excellent and then the action i mean oh. it is it's silky smooth it's glass like it's not a free dropper. This is a this is a a really glassy shake shut action. It's detent. It's perfectly tuned. You can slow roll the blade out really nicely. Reverse flick. That's with the nail. That's with the pad. Uh, it. <sighs> this is one of my favourite actions that I own of any knife. It is so glassy and so satisfying to deploy the detent i can't fail but isn't overly hard it's a really satisfying thwack and acoustically it's got some really really nice sounds if you're into that kind of thing you know where the detent clicks in it's got kind of a high-pitched kind of double ting and this this really interesting thing we're getting really, really geeky here, I know, but the way that the, the blade drops off of the detent ball and onto the the tang of the, um, sorry, the tang that hits the, the lock bar, often that feels quite rough on most knives. This is silky smooth and it sounds just fantastic. Hopefully you can hear that. It's just, it's really, really good. Sorry, I'm getting super geeky, I know. The the sound of it's fantastic. The deployment's really good. The close feels amazing. The lock bar tension um, is really nice and it's easy to disengage, but the lock up is super, super secure. No lock stick. It's it's fantastic. It's top draw. It's amazing. So um, there, there's really not an awful lot else to say. This is this is instantly become one of my favourite knives in my whole collection. Um, and it has, you know, I'm overly lucky uh, to have the collection I do and it has some really stiff competition and this is one of my absolute favourites. I love it. I love how it looks. I love how it feels. Uh, incidentally, ergonomically, it's really nice as well. Um, I There are certain little tweaks that have been done since this knife came out. Um, I think to change a few things, he's extended the... The, the sharpening choil here in the in the graces that came after this before the grace v2 it was just a little way and you can see he's left like a tiny almost beg like i wonder if you can see triangle of unsharpened edge at the very end there which keeps the bevel looking nice and neat but obviously you know you'd need to be very careful sharpening it 
uh, on a knife like this, I don't care. Um, and I really like how smoothly it allows that to flow. I do think proportionally it looks a little bit better than the ones that came after it, but that's a pure taste thing. On the more recent uh, Grace V2, the overall knife has become a bit more slim and a little bit more angular, and it's got a much larger sharpening choil. It just looks like a very, very different knife. Um, it's also gorgeous, um, but right now I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade this one for the world. Really, it's it's one of my favourite knives. So yeah, um, is there anything negative? I can just about catch the blade. If I push my hand in, it's it's not enough to be problematic at all to me. Uh, I, that's about it, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I'd love to tell you that I had something else. So I sounded um, more objective and less like a fanboy. But hey, there you go. Brandon Corbin, uh, Corbin Steelworks. Love this knife. It's fantastic. Um, thank you very much for watching. Catch you soon. Bye.